Hey developers, so today we're gonna look at Svelte as a Vue developer. So if you don't know, I am a big Vue.js fan. I like React, I like Angular. I have done a little tiny bit of Svelte. This would be fun. We can just take a look at the Svelte language, see some similarities between React, see some similarities to Vue, and just talk about it. I would say also this is a great video if you've never used Svelte to kind of kind of fill it out. I know a lot of Vue developers are looking for a, another framework or library that they can use. And I think Svelte is a good choice as a secondary or third library to learn. So let's take a look at it and see what it brings. Oh yeah, and if you're interested in Vue.js, I actually have some really cool courses on Vue and especially Vue 3, it just came out. I wanna put a link in the description below. If you're interested, you can click on it. You can put it in your email and I'll let you know more information about some really neat Vue courses that you can use to learn Vue.js. All right, so here is the Svelte app, uh, Svelte website, I should say, to create Svelte apps. They call it Svelte Cybernetically Enhanced Web Apps. And I'll make this a little bit bigger. And the nice thing about Svelte is that it kind of compiles down uh, and it compiles itself out. So a lot of people say one of the big advantages of Svelte is that it has that smaller bundle size when you get down to it, which is really neat. It also feels like a little bit of a combination of React and Vue, and it has pieces of both. So I thought we could take a look at how that works. So uh, as a Vue developer, I mean, as a developer wanting to learn things, the first thing I always do is Google for the technology I wanna learn. And I would say a really good way of learning Svelte is to use the official documentation. You can see here, right here on the website, there's quite a, quite a great information on how to get started with Svelte. I would say, that of all the different uh, frameworks slash libraries between React, Vue, and Angular, I think Svelte probably comes in a, cl a close second for some of the best documentation. And the reason I really like it is because if you click on this tutorial button up here, it actually kind of goes through this whole like how to start an app. And it has this whole step-by-step uh, -step interactive tutorial, which is really nice. But if you're not interested in that, you can just click on the examples or API and it has really good documentation. I guess nowadays you can't really fault any of the big frameworks or libraries for documentation. They're all pretty good at this point. I just think that now we're talking about like how much better is one uh, versus another. So it's like good versus great. So I think Svelte and Vue definitely have great documentation. So to start off with, I mean, even says right here, you can use this NPX digit Svelte template to download this template. So it seems like that's the way they want you to use it. So I went ahead and did that already. Here is VS Code open. I have, I'm running the terminal at the bottom right here and I ran this command npx digit and I changed directory into it and did an npm install npm run dev. So it is running now. Uh, first thing I noticed as soon as the app loads that you can see here that we have this export let name, but it has the script tag at the top, then the style tag then the main HTML here. So if you're comparing this to Vue right away as a Vue developer, I'm like, well, this is a little strange. It's not what I'm used to. In the Vue world, we have the template tag, kind of the HTML and the templates at the top. Then we have the script tag in the middle, and then we have the style tag at the bottom. So that's like the big difference right off the bat. For me, I think you can probably just style this differently if you want and move this around so it looks more like Vue if you wanted. Uh, but it, it's fine. And another thing that kind of points out if you're a React developer and you're looking at this, uh, once again, you're combining all three, your, your template, your styles, everything in one file, but it does separate them out. So it's not like JSX where we're kind of combining everything into one or combining our JavaScript and HTML. Um, so we'll take a look more like that. Also, you can see here, this is really simple. So we have reactivity out of the box, export let name and then it says hello name right here. So if we look inside our Svelte app, we've got this hello world and it says hello and the name is world. So uh, assuming this name right here, if you look at this main, we're actually pop, uh, passing in this props for world. So that's uh, kind of how it's working. So it's you, uh, you pass in these props this way. So that, that kind of uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of the composition API. And there was this new, I did this video just recently on the experimental features in Vue. And one of the experimental features is you can write the composition API inside the script tag without putting it inside the setup block. 
Uh, so it kind of reminds me of that for a second. I, I don't know why. But you could also like just uh, create more variables and more reactive stuff in here and it works well. So let's take a look at this. So another upgrade is it has a pretty good example section. You can see how it works. By the way, it has this little uh, dollar sign, which means it reruns whenever the value changes. So you can see here, I don't know, we can add in this doubled count and we can just take a look what happens here. So down here we'll have, I'm gonna delete uh, this right here. I'm gonna put this doubled here and then they actually, to do buttons, um, you can see I can make it a little bigger here. They have this handle click and then inside the HTML they have this on handler, which uh, if, you, if I'm thinking as a view developer, this is very similar to V dash on so we usually declare events like that, or if you don't want to use V dash on, you would do the at symbol. So this would be a way to, to do events off the top. So let's just add this handle click in, put it in the right place right here. This is where I want to do it. Button, press me, and then this button will have this uh, on, and then click, and, and instead of doing it like this, we'll have this click handler which I'm going to paste. I'm going to call this a function handle click. I guess I could have done this in this editor here, but I'm going to pass in this handle click. Handle click. And I'm going to call this press me. Now I'm getting a couple errors here. Count is not defined and quadruple. And by the way, I went ahead and installed a few extensions first of all. I always like to do this whenever I'm playing around with a new framework or library. And it looks like the ones that people recommend are Svelte for VS Code, Svelte IntelliSense, and Svelte 3 Snippets. So I installed all three of those and it seems to be, works well. Uh, okay, so we have this doubled, but I forgot to add quadrupled. I'm just kind of copy and pasting code here. This is kind of like how I start learning things. And there's this count. And now, Let's see, I don't get any errors in my cons in my system here. Here's my self spelled app. Cool, so you can see here, every time I click it, it's doubling. So it's interesting. I mean, this is, this sort of reminds me in view of doing computer properties or a watch where any, if anything in these values change, it automatically updates. So in this case, once counts get updates, uh, it, up, it run, this function gets run, run again. Same thing when double gets updated. So that's kind of neat. Uh, I do like how inside Svelte, you would usually in a view app, you would have this whole um, export const default and you would have to write everything inside here and you would have to have this data object and um, then we'd have to have this computer properties and everything and this, you don't have to do any of that. Like I said, um, it feels a little bit like the experimental composition API where you can do it inside script tags a little bit. But I mean, this is really clean syntax that you can use. So it looks like everything is reactive here. Um, you don't have to like declare it reactive and it seems to be working great. So that, that's interesting. Uh, another thing I, I notice is that you'd use uh, single quotes. So instead of like a double curly bracket mustache syntax that you would normally see in, in a view app, it has the single uh, curly bracket like you see in React. So that might be very similar to what you might be used to if you're in a React. It also, you can do whole dynamic uh, inline expressions inside here. So I'm sure if I do name count, or even, I don't know if I can even do count plus five times two. Let's see here. Yeah, so you can see here, uh, two times two is four. And I added it to this um, doubled. So if I hit one here, I guess it didn't. Oh yeah, now it says seven. So it says six here. So normally it would be, um, starts at one. So yeah, so it added five to it. So that's kind of cool. You can do expressions right in the middle here. Uh, that works great. Uh, another few things that kind of uh, stand out to me is prop. So uh, if you watch my video on a view developer learning React for the first time, you may have saw me talk about how um, um, how you pass things in and out of a React app. Usually you pass in like whole functions down in, in, in as your props, but it looks like uh, for 
um, and, and well, they both have props, but they also have just a different way of handling passing information back and forth and also emitting events. But the props look very similar to, I guess you could say this is, looks similar to React and Vue. Uh, one thing inside Vue, you always have to declare your props, but it looks like in Svelte you don't. You can just pass in whatever you want. You can um, even set default values. So here in this nested one, so if I want to do some some props, so let's create a new, let's do a new uh, file here, new one called Eric. And I'm just going to have a hello world here. Hello world. And then I can put a script tag at the top. Inside the script tab, if I do export, I believe to grab stuff, you can have, you just put the export and the name of it. So let name, just kind of like we had it earlier. So hello world name, and I'll put in curly brackets here. And now I can import this in. So I'm gonna import it here. Import Eric from Svelte, uh, Eric.svelte. I think there's some naming conventions. You have to have this as like uppercase as the name. And now if I just put in Eric and save it, look at my app. You can see hello world undefined, but I can actually set this to a default name. So I don't know, I can set it default to Eric. Hello world Eric. But if I wanted to pass something in, I could pass something in as a name and then whatever name I want, Bob, I guess. Hello world Bob. I could also like have a variable in here and pass it in there. I don't know, I can pass in name. Like this, I guess. Hello world world. <laughs> Looks like if you just, you don't even have to put in the name equals, it just equals, um, as long as you have it in the curly brackets name, it does it for you. So that's that's very similar to, to React. And in the view world, you would normally have a name here, like name, like, like this, name equals, and then depending on if you had a colon here or V on, you can bind it to something within inside the app or you can actually have like a template literal and just have a text string in there. So that's kind of cool that you can do it this way. So definitely a little bit different, maybe a little bit simpler syntax in the Svelte side. Another thing that, uh, as we wrap it up here, there's so many different little things that like, once again, if you guys like this video, leave a comment below and let me know. Maybe I can do even in a bigger, deep dive into differences between Vue and Svelte is that uh, I mentioned quickly, there's, we have events here. There's different text bindings. You can do two-way data bindings. They have the same life cycle hooks as Vue. So in the React world, we have hooks, but it's not the same type of hooks that you might think of like Vue and hooks, but it's, uh, you have like this, these hooks that kind of replace these life cycle hooks. But on this, this life cycle, you still have on mount, on destroy. That's very similar to Vue. So if I wanted to connect to a third party API, I might do this like this example right here inside my on mount and then just have it, um, I have it assigned to something. But I, I kind of want to show real quickly the uh, composition, the slots. So this is very, very, very similar to what we have in the view world. So if you in here, if I have an opening and closing of this Eric here, well, in this case, I'll do Eric, and I'll put some text in here, like, uh, I don't know, hello world. Or well, let's say, hi from inside component. Um, if I do that, and I look here, I don't see it. I just see this hello world world, it's not there. But if I go into this Eric Svelte, I can actually have a slot. And if I do that, and I save it, now I see it comes through. And so it has some of the similar things that you see in Vue. You can do name slots, you can have fallbacks, you can have slot props. Basically, you can take stuff from a, a parent, a child component and bring it up to the parent component. So that's very, very much like you would see in, in uh, Vue. So that's kind of a nice, nice addition that they kind of stole from Vue, I would say, is this whole slots. And also for events, they do have emitting or you can dispatch events from child components back up to parent components, 
which is very similar to in view how you can emit, com emit information from child components to parent components. So it looks like they did have that same idea. While in React, usually you pass whole components down as props um, inside your components. And that's how you like pass stuff in. And I think you can even pass stuff back up, back out similarly. All right, so that's all I have to say. I mean, I definitely see a lot as a Vue developer, I see a lot of, of nice little additions, uh, less code in some instances. I think where Vue really shines is the community, all the different third-party libraries, the support, uh, you know, Nux.js, uh, Gridsum, all the really cool stuff in the, the Vue ecosystem. I think anything that creates a static site would be very, very small bundle size, probably comparative to a, a large Svelte project too, even though Svelte like compiles away your the logic. Um, it compiles down to just JavaScript, HTML, CSS. It compiles away the actual library. In this case, I think that's kind of already solved in some instances with Vue, depending on the, the app that you're building. So I'm really, I'm really think uh, that Svelte is pretty cool. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of Svelte. I really appreciate it. And also, if you're interested in learning Vue, make sure you click on that link in the description and sign up for it. Thanks.